Welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist on this, the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us, and may the spirit of Christmas reside with you always. Most merciful and loving God, you have made this night holy by the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin, Mary. Grant that we, your people, may enter with joy into the celebration of this day, and may also rejoice forever as your adopted sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, who has come to dwell among us. O oh, come, let us adore him. With one voice and heart we pray, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts, hearts are open, open all desires, desires known, and, and from, from you, you no secrets, secrets are hid. hid. Cleanse, Cleanse the, the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly, perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you, you have, caused have caused this holy, holy night, night to, shine to shine with the, the brightness, brightness of the, the true light. light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy God perfectly in heaven, where, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in, in glory, glory everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. 
For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Word of the Lord. Sing to God a new song. Sing to God all the whole earth. Sing and bless God's holy name. Proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's wonders among all peoples. For God is great and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is God who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of God's presence, O oh, the power and the splendor of God's sanctuary. Ascribe to God, you families of the peoples, ascribe to God honor and power. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name. Bring offerings and come into the courts of praise. Worship the Most High in the beauty of holiness. May the whole earth stand in awe. Tell it out among the nations that God reigns. God has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. God will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyous and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before God. Who will come? Who will come to judge the earth? God will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with truth. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us for all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. Here ends the reading.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the newborn Christ. Amen. Hello, Diocese of Massachusetts. It is my very great delight and honor to be with you this evening, even virtually. And I extend you every blessing on this holiest of nights. Ten days ago, the Boston Medical Center received its first shipment of the COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer. Staff was excited about the milestone, grateful to be the first hospital in Massachusetts to start vaccinating its workers. So that day, the BMC social media posted a 30-second TikTok clip featuring a dozen staff members dancing with choreographed abandon in the parking lot. It was pretty spectacular. Medical personnel in their scrubs, administrators in their suits, everyone duly masked, 
and everyone grooving to the beat of the rapper Lizzo, some with truly impressive style. There were frontline workers, exhausted, no doubt. But for the moment, just for a moment, offering a spontaneous display of relief and self-dedication and hope. Tens of thousands of likes came from all around the country, and hundreds of grateful comments were posted. You all are so amazing, said one. No words, pure shared happiness, said another. Moderna trial participant here, crying happy tears for my hometown, said another. The guy in the suit had moves. Thanks for all you guys do. So glad we are finally able to protect you. Shine bright, BMC. But then, inevitably, there were the naysayers, that underbelly of the comment string. So, I take it the ICUs aren't at max capacity, said one, or are you TikTok dancing while patients are dying? You're making this pandemic a joke, said another. People are dying and these clowns are dancing, said another. Every single one of them should be ashamed of themselves. Did they forget their oath? An outpouring of relief and gratitude is condemned as vulgar and frivolous and self-centered. Three thousand years ago, when David had been anointed king over Israel, he gathered 30,000 men and he set out to bring the Ark of the Covenant up to Jerusalem. As recounted in 2 Samuel, David danced before the Lord with all his might, girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought the Ark up with shouting, with the sound of a trumpet. Then Mishal, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And David returned to bless his household, but Mishal came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly do. And David said to Mishal, it was before the Lord that I have danced. The king danced with unselfconscious abandon, a manifestation of self-dedication and praise. But in Jerusalem, just as in Boston 3,000 years later, David's relief and gratitude are condemned as vulgar and frivolous and self-centered. The scriptural witness generally holds dancing in high esteem, puritanical attitudes notwithstanding. Dancing in the Bible is almost always a means of, of worship, a form of praise. You turned my wailing into dancing, says the psalmist. You removed my sackcloth and filled me with joy. And famously, on the far bank of the Red Sea, after the Israelites escaped the pursuing Egyptians, Miriam took a tambourine in her hand, and all the people danced. They danced with abandon. And mark well, this was not just a dance of victory. It was also a dance of hope. It was not just a dance for the deliverance now past. It was also a dance forward for the long trek ahead. Thus, dance, we are told, is a prophetic enactment paving the way for the Lord's continued movement in our lives. It is a mark of the covenant that we have with God, a covenant in which God is faithful to us ultimately turning our mourning into gladness, 
and we keep covenant with God through dance. The dance of joy and praise, and yes, the dance forward into action and servanthood. And is it not precisely when things look discouraging, even hopeless, that we need God to pick us back up and put us back in that conga line of praise, swaying in body, mind, and spirit, with companions ahead of us and behind us, declaring to ourselves and to all who will see that even in our darkest moments, our joy in Christ is complete. So I wonder, how do we feel about dancing these days? I imagine we are not much in the mood. It is a dark time, an anxious time. Globally, 1.7 million lives have been taken by this deadly virus. Our nation leads the pack with some 325,000 deaths. And we are enduring so many restrictions, not the least of which, tonight, are all the cherished ways that we customarily mark Christmas. Traditions which are not, cannot be part of our celebration this year. How we miss those gatherings of family and friends. How we miss the bustle of preparation. How we miss our full churches, our full hearts, our full voiced singing of those Christmas carols. That grief is very real. Though I have said before, and I say again, we must never lose sight of the fact that the sacrifices which most of us are making do not compare with the depth of the loss suffered by those who have lost their very lives and by their loved ones. Connected with the pandemic is the economic devastation visited upon so many. Connected with the pandemic are hunger and evictions. Connected with the pandemic is the undeniable link with racism manifest in unequal access to health care and support systems. Connected with the pandemic is paralysis in our national leadership. Connected with the pandemic is the loss of global commitment to common solutions. So I wonder, how do we feel about dancing these days? I imagine we are not much in the mood. People are dying and these clowns are dancing, said the BMC critic. And yet, And yet, if it is true that sometimes relief and self-dedication are called for, perhaps we should dance. If it is true that a celebration might be not only for some deliverance in the past, but also to give us strength for the wilderness wandering yet to come, then perhaps we should dance. If it is true that dance is a prophetic enactment paving the way for God's continuous movement in our lives, then I expect we should dance. And if it is true that the God who is faithful to us, turning our mourning into gladness, delights at our dances of joy and praise as our part of the covenant, well then, by all means, Let's absolutely join that festive choreography of praise and service in the parking lot or wherever it's happening.
I suppose it goes without saying, but I will say, that our dancing comes in many forms. Some of us are people graced with the beauty of movement. I am not one of those. Whether it was my Calvinist upbringing, or the uncertainty of adolescent self-image, or general waspy reserve, which prevented me from mastering much in the way of dance moves, I cannot say. But I can say that just as we all can have a song in our heart, even if we cannot carry a tune, so we can all have a dance in our heart, no matter how we move. And friends, this is a night for our hearts to dance with abandon. Tomorrow shall be my dancing day, says that beautiful English carol. Do you know it? Tomorrow shall be my dancing day. I would my true love did so chance to see the legend of my play, to call my true love to my dance, sing, oh, my love, oh, my love, my love, my love, this have I done for my true love. With origins in a medieval mystery play set to numerous beautiful tunes, the carol speaks to us in the voice of Christ himself. And he tells us that all that he has done from start to finish he has done for his beloved, which is to say, the church, which is to say, me and you. Then was I born of a virgin pure, of her I took fleshly substance, thus was I knit to human nature to call my true love to my dance, sing, oh my love, oh my love, my love, my love, this have I done for my true love. to call my true love to my dance. So, not frivolous, not self-centered, no, but love responding to love. This year, not in spite of the grief and anxiety all around us, but precisely in the face of that grief, let us dance. Dance in gratitude for past hardships endured. Dance in sorrow with those who suffer and grief. Dance in determination to be agents of the gospel justice. Dance in hope, greeting that light which shines in the darkness and is not overcome. Dance in joy, for never in our lifetime, never have we yearned more deeply for love that is embodied, love made tangible, love made real in the physical presence of the other. Never have we missed that physical presence so much for so long. And we call that incarnation. And on this night, God declared that God's very love would itself be made tangible, made incarnate. And so it was, and so it is, again and again and again. Sorrowing and anxious, more than a little lonesome perhaps, we wait quietly on this Eve of the Incarnation, only to find 
the one who loves us beyond measure, leaning down and saying to me and saying to you, may I have this dance? Merry Christmas to you, dear friends. Christmas blessings to you. We now join together with one voice and heart reciting the words from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, Almighty, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and earth of all, all that, that is seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, Son the Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, of the Father God, God from God, God light from light, true, true God, God from true God, God begotten, begotten, not, not made, made, of one being, being with the Father. Father. Through him, him all things were made. made. For us, for us and, and for our, our salvation, salvation, he came, he came down, down from heaven. heaven. By the By power the of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he, became he became incarnate, incarnate from the Virgin Mary, Mary and was, was made, made human. human. For our, our sake, sake, he was, was crucified, crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, suffered he suffered death and was buried. buried. On the On third the day, he rose again, again in, in accordance with, with the scriptures. scriptures. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven. heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and, and his, his kingdom will have no end. end. We, believe we believe in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son. With, With the Father and the Son, the Spirit is worshipped and glorified. The Spirit has spoken through the prophets. We believe, we believe in one, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. church. We acknowledge one, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for, for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. The word has been made flesh. The light of God's love has broken through our darkness. The day star from on high now shines in our hearts. Filled with the joy of Jesus' birth, let us pray together in the power of God's Spirit, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Prince of Peace may guide the leaders of the nations and all women and men everywhere into the ways of freedom and truth. Let us pray. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Alan and Gail, our bishops, and Will, our priest, that they may guide us in our journey to Bethlehem, uniting the whole church as we live into our spiritual kinship with one another. Let us pray. For those for whom the darkness has suffocated hope, the lonely, the fearful, the hungry, and those who bear a private grief, that they may see the dawn of God's love and revive the eternal hope that never fades away, let us pray. For our families and friends, and for all our absent sisters and brothers, for those who are sick, that we name now silently and aloud. Let us pray. For those who have died, and who now feast at the heavenly banquet of God's grace, we pray especially for those in whose loving memories our Christmas flowers are given, and all those we name now silently 
or allowed. Let us pray. That we may be released from the captivity of our sins, the places of interior blindness that cause us to choose darkness over light, that we may be given, forgiven by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. That we who gather to share the Holy Eucharist and those throughout the world who come to receive this sacrament of Holy Presence may bear witness to Christ born in our hearts. Let us pray. Source of light and gladness, Accept the prayers we offer on this joyful feast. May the rising sun of Christ spread across the world and brighten all humanity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace and love of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Well, what a glorious night, a night on which we've been waiting for, it seems like, a long time. Our Advent is now behind us. The light of Christ is now in the world, among us, always. I pray that this will be a glorious Christmas season for you. Remember that it lasts more than just one night or one day. And as we enter into the new year, if you're watching us and in the area of Falmouth, Massachusetts on Cape Cod, know that we will welcome your presence with us as we worship, now virtually, but God willing, and I believe God is, we will be worshiping again together as a community in person in the months ahead. So please sign up for our e-news, give us your contact information, and we will keep you posted on events and activities taking place here at St. Barnabas. Merry Christmas. My beloved, walk in love as Christ loved us and made himself a fragrant offering and perfect sacrifice to God. Worship night and day. Oh. 
breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him who angels fall down before the ox and ass and camel which The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your eternal Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect human of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, 
Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we, we remember, remember his, his death. death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection. resurrection. We, we await, await his, his coming, coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary, Joseph, Barnabas, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, be done on, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give us give this, this day, day our, our daily, daily bread, bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us lead not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the, and the power, power and the glory, and glory forever, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We pray with one voice. Beloved Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are, are present, present in the, the blessed, blessed sacrament, sacrament of the, of the altar. altar. I, love I love you above all things, things and, and I, I desire, desire to receive, receive you into my soul. Since, since I cannot at this, this moment receive, receive you in the sacrament, sacrament of your body and, and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life are in the life to come. Amen.
Will you now pray? Gracious God, we are filled with joy, for we have heard good news of great joy. We are filled with love, for we have seen and tasted the sign of God's great love. We are filled with hope, for the angels still sing in our world, and still there is a star to follow. Joy, hope, and love. These are the gifts of God for those whose hearts and minds are in Christ Jesus. Bless us and send us into the world, serving you in all that we do. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the eternal Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of God's holiness. Amen. May God, who sent angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, 
join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, one holy and undivided trinity be upon you and remain with you and all those you love this day and forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Merry Christmas. Thanks Thanks be to be to God.